Bipolar junction transistor current is complicated and understanding whether a particular BGT is good or not requires the definition of a few efficiency metrics. So if we look at the BGT, we have a lot of current components. We have, for example, the emitter current being formed of I1 and I4. We want it to be mostly formed of I1 because this is the current that will actually reach the collector. There's also the fact that some base current is absorbed from I1 so that I5 does not equal I1. The end of the matter is that IC is equal to IE minus IB. We want IC to consist mostly of IE and we want it to consist mostly of electrons. So how do we guarantee this? Well, we have to define efficiency parameters first and then look at what factors affect these efficiency parameters. So the first efficiency parameter is gamma, which is called the emitter efficiency. And it defines the ratio of the emitter current, which is formed of electrons in an NPN. So it's basically I1 divided by I1 plus I6. And ideally, it should be close to 1 because we want the emitter current to be mostly electron current. We know to begin with, like without making any calculations, that this is going to happen if emitter doping is much higher than base doping. The second factor we can define is the base transport factor, which is the ratio of the collector current to the uh, injected electrons from uh, the emitter. So it's basically the ratio of I5 to I1. We want this to also be as close to 1 as possible. The thing that's going to take away from I1 as it tries to flow into I5 is I2, which is the base current. So what's stopping alpha t from becoming 1 is the base current. Alpha naught is very similar to alpha t, except that it's, it measures the ratio of IC to the total emitter current. So it also takes into consideration that I emitter is not only I1, but is I1 plus I4. So it obviously has a relation to uh, alpha t and gamma. Beta, or the common emitter current gain, is the most commonly used parameter to characterize BJT efficiency. It is the ratio between collector current and base current. This should normally be huge because collector current forms the majority of, um, takes the ma major portion of emitter current, while base current takes only a small portion of it. So we found current expressions for I emitter and I base. And we know that the collector current is going to be uh, the difference between the two. Um, just one note that when collect calculating the value of I base, we can use the relationship between Ln, Dn, and tau n to re-express this equation and get rid of tau n and express it instead in terms of the mean length Ln and Dn, the diffusivity. This make, makes the expression of I base closer to the expression of I emitter allowing us to find uh, more uh, useful relationships for gamma and alpha and beta. Now, I collector is going to be the difference between these two currents, which means that I collector is only going to be a function of VBE, because this is the only voltage that makes an appearance here. So obviously, the current equation, uh, the current for in the collector, is not going to be a function of the voltage of the collector. It's going to be a function of the voltage of the base and the emitter. So we have a current flowing through a terminal that is not a function of the voltage of the terminal. We have basically uh, formed a uh, voltage-controlled current source, which is the definition of a transistor. So this is where the transistor action comes from. So let's start calculating the efficiency parameters, and the easiest is gamma. And gamma is equal to I1 over I1 plus I6. So it is the electron component of uh, the emitter current divided by the total emitter current. This is the total emitter current. We have the expression here. And the electron component of the emitter current is uh, this component. So the ratio can be uh, simply written as dn np0 over wb divided by dp pn0 over we plus dn np0 over wb. This can be further um, 
simplified using some algebra into 1 over 1 plus dp pn naught over dn np naught times wb over we. So we talked about what we want gamma to be ideally, and we want gamma to ideally be close to 1. We find that this is going to happen if we, wb is much smaller than we, which is true. The width of the emitter is normally much larger than the width of the base. One of the base, basic assumptions about a BJT is that the base is extremely narrow. But this is also going to happen if a PN0 is much smaller than NP0. And PN0 is the uh, equilibrium level of uh, holes uh, in the emitter, which is going to be Ni square over an emitter. And we want this to be much smaller than the equilibrium level of electrons in the base, which is Ni square over N base. And so this tells us that we want the doping in the emitter, Ne, to be much greater than the doping in the base, and B, which is something we could have um, concluded without going through the calculation, and it is something we have concluded from the very beginning. So it is uh, very intuitive. Now let's move to the calculation of alpha t, uh, the base transport factor. And alpha t was defined as the uh, ratio of um, uh, co collector current I6 to the injected electrons from the emitter. So we have no, no way to calculate uh, collector current except as uh, the injected electrons from the emitter minus I base, which we have already calculated. Uh, and so that gives us a, an expression 1 minus IB over I1. We can substitute the values of IB and I1, the expression of IB and I1, and then do some simplification using algebra. And we end up with 1 minus WB square over 2 ln square. Again, we want alpha t to be close to 1. And alpha t is going to be close to 1 if WB square is much smaller than ln square or WB is much smaller than ln. So again, we come back to the base width, which is always something that informs our um, understanding of the BJT. So we want the base width to be much smaller than the uh, average lifetime of electrons, a life, uh, average length of electron recombination within the base which actually makes sense. We want the base to be shorter than the average length that electrons can travel through the base before recombining, because any electron that recombines forms part of the base current. And so we want most of the electrons to make it to the collector. Now, we can also calculate beta, which is the common emitter current gain, which is defined as IC over IB. And IC is I1 minus IB over IB. So uh, we can calculate this. It's going to be uh, I1 minus uh, I1 over IB minus 1. So we can calculate this again using some algebra. We can find that beta is equal to 2 ln square over WB square minus 1. And if ln is much bigger than L WB, which is what we want, then beta is approximately equal to 2 ln square over WB square. So again, we end up with wanting WB to be much smaller than ln because we want uh, beta to be large. Now, there's obviously a relationship between uh, alpha t and beta. We can see it from the expressions of the two because they are very similar. And using just a little bit of algebra, we can find that beta is equal to alpha t over 1 minus alpha t. So this is not very difficult to do. Uh, once we do that, we can combine alpha t and gamma to find alpha naught. Because alpha naught is the ratio between the total collector current and the total emitter current. Gamma relates uh, I1 to the total emitter current, while alpha t relates collector current to the injected uh, emitter electrons. And so alpha naught is basically equal to alpha t times gamma. And because we have found an expression for alpha t and gamma, we can find an expression for alpha naught. If we look at all these expressions and all these efficiency parameters, 
we discovered that there are two things we want from the BGT for it to work properly. We want the emitter to be heavily doped. Specifically, we want the emitter to be much more heavily doped than the base. We really don't care about doping at the collector, but we care about doping in the base. So we want the base to be lightly doped. The main reason for that is that we don't want a lot of holes to be injected into the emitter. This allows the emitter current to be formed entirely of electrons or almost entirely of electrons. And thus, when these electrons manage to reach the collector, we have a good alpha. How do we guarantee that most of these electrons manage to reach the collector? We do so by reducing the base width, preventing most of the electrons from recombining within the base.